So should you hire a guide to climb Mont Blanc or is it a reasonable thing to do with a mate or even on your own? Hi, my name's John with Mont Blanc Guides here in Chamonix and obviously I am a guide, but I hope I can still give you an objective answer to this question. Uh, like all guides, I spent a lot of years as a, an amateur alpinist myself and I'm pretty sure I can speak for the guiding community in general when I say that I'm entirely for everyone's right to climb whatever they like in the mountains with or without taking a guide. So to be clear, this isn't a how-to video. I'm not gonna talk about equipment or acclimatization, for example, as I wanna cover those in future videos. I'm just gonna focus now on the technical nature of the climbing, the idea being to help you decide for yourself whether or not you have the necessary skills to go it alone. Now there's absolutely no reason at all not to climb Mont Blanc unguided if that's what you want to do, but be aware it is a proper alpine climb and not in any way a high altitude trek like for example Kilimanjaro or even Aconcagua, both of which of course being much higher summits. None of the required skills are particularly difficult to master, but you must absolutely learn them before setting out, otherwise you could end up in a properly dangerous situation. So with that in mind, let's start by looking at our last ascent of 2020, starting just above the Nidegla train on the way to the Tet Roos hut and going right up to the summit. Now this should give you a good idea of the sort of terrain involved and equally importantly, give me a chance to show off my drone footage again. So here we go. Now hopefully you can see from that what I mean when I say Mont Blanc is very much a climb and not a walk or a hike. Technically easy climb perhaps, but only if you have some previous mountaineer experience. So if all you've done at this point is hill walking and scrambling, I think this is really only an option with a guide. If on the other hand you've done a bit of mountaineering but maybe still aren't quite sure if you want to do this unguided, let's uh, have a look now at the main sections and what I'll do is I'll try and give you an idea of the skills you'll need to deal with each one safely. Right, so the climbing starts properly above the Tet Roos hut, which you can see in the foreground here. And the route includes crossing the Grand Couloir, which is the rising traverse at half height. Now this can be prone to stonefall, so you would need to check conditions on that before you set off. So the first question is, are you happy to scramble up and down this sort of ground on your own? Uh, it's not difficult and you hardly need to use your hands really to get up it, but it is steep enough that if you do trip and fall, you'll probably keep going. So you need to be 100% confident that isn't going to happen. 
Uh, bear in mind also that having a rope doesn't really help much here unless you're with a guide who's holding on to you. If you just tie yourself to someone else, it doesn't really add to your security at all. Uh, remember also it can change very quickly from mainly dry rock like this, where you may or may not need crampons, to snowed up rock like this where you definitely will and uh, it's obviously much worse going down and of course you might have to do the ascent or the descent or both in the dark. Okay so we're starting up the Dom de Goutte here above the Goutte hut. And uh, though there is the old crevasse here, and it's certainly wise to rope up for glacier travel, which of course you need to know how to do, but again, it's not particularly tricky. Um, the biggest danger here is actually navigation. This is where everyone gets lost when the cloud or bad weather comes in, and tracks can disappear really rapidly if it snows. And so you absolutely must have some means of navigating precisely, and it's really not a good idea to just rely on following other people or following tracks. Uh, it doesn't matter what your system is, whether it's using a GPS or a map and a compass, but you really do need to have it thoroughly nailed uh, and well practiced in advance. Up above the Vallo emergency shelter now, and the route becomes a series of knife edge ridges. So previous experience of this sort of terrain is essential as tripping over your crampons here is not an option. Moving together roped up can give some security here as if one person falls on one side of the ridge, the second can, if he's got the courage to do it, jump off the other side. But moving together roped up is an alpine climbing skill that you need to be practiced in if it's going to do you any good. And some of the sections here go more or less straight up, so just being roped together won't actually help you. If you want to know what these top ridges on Mont Blanc are like, uh, I can recommend you go up the Aguida Midi cable car in summer and cramp on down the snow ridge that leads down to the glacier. There's no handrail in summer and it's very similar to the top ridges on Mont Blanc. So personally, I think you should be totally comfortable doing this without a rope if you're planning on climbing Mont Blanc unguided. Now, having said that, don't for goodness sake push it. Of course, it's a serious place and if you fall, very bad things will happen. But if you look at it and decide you don't fancy it, Better to find that out here where you can just turn around and go back down in the cable car than on the top ridges of Mont Blanc. So in summary then, these are the skills that I think you need to climb Mont Blanc unguided. Number one, solid scrambling experience for the steep ground between the Tete Russe and Goutte. Number two, solid cramponing experience for the steep snow ridges above the Valo Refuge. And in both cases, you shouldn't be relying on being roped up. Number three, the ability to navigate accurately. And number four, a basic understanding of roping up for glacier travel. So the alternative to all this is to just go with a guide. As guides, we're really not interested in pulling people up mountains. What we like to do is get, you, get to know you as our client and uh, work together with you as a team. So it ends up being just like climbing with a more experienced partner. Also, if you want to join one of our six day Mont Blanc programs, you don't need any previous experience at all. We'll teach you the skills you need. You just need to turn up fit enough to get yourself up there. So there we are then. If you fancy climbing Mont Blanc, you should absolutely go for it. It's a fantastic thing to do. Just make sure that you either learn the skills to do it on your own or you hire a guide to go with you. Whatever you do, don't for goodness sake, just launch up there having done neither of those things. I'm John and Mont Blanc Guides. I really hope this was helpful. If it was, maybe you'd hit the like button below or subscribe if you want to find out more about climbing Mont Blanc. And if you want more information on our guided Mont Blanc programs, please check out the website in the link below. Thanks for watching and however you choose to go about it, loads of luck on Mont Blanc.